Hello friends, so today we are going to discuss this question from Sporch, problem name, longest path in a tree. So you are given an unweighted, undieted tree and you have to write a program to output the length of the longest path from one node to another in that tree. The length of a path in this case is the number of edges we traverse from source to destination. Okay, so you have to number of edges. So I can tell you with this example, let's assume this is a tree and you are given this in the form of the number of nodes and the number and how many how the edges are connected so one is connected to two and two is connected to three so i have to find out the longest path in this case the longest path is from four till seven it goes till like here so it can be assumed to be the diameter of the tree but now this must not be a perfectly binary tree or something like that it can be an angry tree and there can be a number of nodes going from anywhere and it is not a rooted tree also. Okay, so how can we do that? Now we want to find out the longest part, which is actually the diameter of a tree. So first what we can do here is because we do not know the root, we have to first find out what is the farthest point from any of the nodes. Okay, so let's assume because first we make an adjacency map list. So uh, because we are given all the edges, we can first create this agency matrix for one is connected to two and five. Sorry, one is connected to two and five, and two is connected to two and three, and so on. Then what we will do here is we will start from one, and we will run a BFS, and we will store the distance because BFS always gives the shortest path from any node to all the nodes. Okay, so now we run a BFS from one till all the nodes. And we find out the, the farthest node from 1. So it will turn out to be 4 or 7 because both of them are the farthest. Now as we know that after doing so, we will reach one extremity according to this node. Okay. Now what we will do here is we will again run a BFS from this node because this is the farthest node. And now when we run a BFS, we will find out the farthest node with respect to this road now which will turn out to be 4 and the distance between these two nodes will be the farthest distance. So this is the logic behind this. So we will first take out any node and find out the farthest distant node from that node. We will take it to be 1. We will find out that this is the farthest. Then we again run the BFS from here and find out the next farthest. So how we can do the farthest? We can make a distance vector and run a BFS in which we will take a queue. We will first push the first node which is 1 in the queue. We will check whether our queue or empty is empty or not. It is not empty. I'll also we will initialize the distance for 1 because the first node, the distance between this node and itself is 0. So we will initialize the distance of this node from which we are starting a BFS to be 0. Now we will and we will initialize all the rest of the distances to be minus 1 because we haven't find out the minimum distance yet for all the nodes except for 1 because we have find out because the uh, distance from this node to itself is 0. Now we will move on to the adjacency list of 1 and because it is 2 and 5 what we will do here is the minimum distance of this because we will check whether the distance of 2 is we, ha we haven't find it out. How we can check? Because it is minus 1. So what we will do here is we will update the distance which is the distance of this node plus 1 which will turn out to be 1. Now same for 5. 3, 4, 5. It will become 1. Now we will push both of these, both of these nodes in the queue and pop this node out. Because the queue is not empty, we will still run our uh, like BFS, take pop out 2 and for it 2, the edges are, nodes are 1 and 3. Because 1 is visited, because it is not minus 1, that's why we will not iterate for 1. We will iterate over for 3 only. And what is the distance for 3? Because it is not visited, it is minus 1. What we will do here is, the minimum distance is the distance of 2 plus 1. That will distance for 3. So the distance for 2 is 1. 
and you will add one to it. It will turn out to be two. And then we will go to the essential list for three, and we will push three here. Pop it out two. Then we go to essential list of five. So it is doing it in breadth-wise order. In this, these all are two. These all are three. These all are four, and so on. So I hope you understand. After that, we will have filled our distance matrix of how many nodes are at which position. We will iterate over this whole distance array and find out the maximum distance and the node. So we will return a pair, which will be returning the node. Which is the maximum distance from this node and the distance? Okay. Now we will again run a BFS. We have the essential list. We will initialize this. We will make everything empty. This this queue will become empty. This distance matrix will become minus one. Initialize it to minus one. And what we will do here is everything is initialized to minus one now. Now there will be. A node for six and a node for seven. So now, because seven is the starting node, the distance for seven to itself it's turned out to be zero. And we run our BFS from seven. Okay. So this is the first. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And that's how we find out the distances. So I'll move you to the code now to make it more clear. This is a solve function. We will take the input of n. And all the edges are n minus one. We'll take the input of n minus one, all the edges from u to v or a to b, and then we will decrement its count by minus one because we want to index indexing from zero, and thus because they are given from one till n, we will make it from zero to n minus one. We'll push them and make it undirected. Push them in the essential matrix of a push b, and for b push a. Then what we'll do here is. We will run the BFS starting from zero because in here our starting node will be one. But because you have taken or everything down starting from indexing zero, so now this will become zero. So we will run our BFS from zero, and this will return a pair. That's why I've used auto. And the first value of the pair is the node itself, and the second value is the distance, maximum distance. So we will again run the BFS using the first value, x dot first, which is the farthest node. From zero, and after that, our answer will be y dot second because second value stored a distance. And when we run the second BFS, the second this y stores y dot first stores the farthest node from x dot first, and the distance between x dot first and the farthest node is y dot second. So we return y dot second. And how this BFS function works? We have made this essential list. This is the BFS function. In which this is the distance. I have initialized the distance uh, vector. Initialize everything to zero minus one. I'm set it. Use a queue push back this initial uh, node from which we want to start out in the queue. Make its distance equal to zero. Then we will run a while loop till queue is not empty. Take out the first element, uh, pop it out, and iterate over all its children over the popped out element. If it's Is minus one, which means it is not visited. We haven't stored or finded out the minimum distance of v. What we will do here is we will push back the node itself, the children in the queue, and we will update our distance, which is the distance of the children is equal to distance of parent plus one. And after that, we will find out the maximum distance and the index, which is the which is maximum distance from the the node from which we have started. So we will iterate over the distance. Vector find out whether the value is greater than the maximum. We'll update a maximum and the index, and we return the index as well as the maximum distance. So I hope you understand the logic as well as the code. If you still have any doubts, please mention down. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding. Bye.